In the debate between theists and atheists, there's an ever-present theme that I believe is unavoidable whenever discovering the truth is the ultimate goal, science. Both sides of the argument are prone to use scientific facts to support their stance, and that is perfectly acceptable, as long as it's done properly. Let me explain what I mean by that. Whether theist or atheist, if one takes a widely accepted scientific fact and then uses it to make a logically sound statement that fits into their argument, that is valid, though that still does not prove that you are correct in your conclusion. What is not acceptable is denying widely accepted scientific facts and then acting as if your argument still holds any grounds in reality. Science is the best and most effective way that we can come to know anything. It's the difference between doing lobotomies, exorcisms, and bloodletting versus actual medical treatment. It's the difference between a two-day walk to the next city and a two-hour drive in a car. It's the difference between waiting days, weeks, or even months to receive a letter from a loved one versus picking up a phone and being able to instantaneously communicate with people all over the world. We know that science works because we actively benefit from it every day, and we can show that it works. Now, science isn't perfect, and we know that, but it is a self-correcting process. Nothing except better science has ever proven science to be wrong in any way, shape, or form. Science is defined as the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment, and also a systematically organized body of knowledge on a particular subject. Science is not the random guessing game that so many people try to portray it as whenever it disagrees with their beliefs. For instance, one of the most popular and influential religious science groups is Answers in Genesis. On their website, they have posted a statement of faith, one which all employees and affiliates must agree and adhere to, including their scientists. This statement of faith lays the foundation with which the entire organization operates, and I hope you'll see why that's a problem. There are several points in that document which display horrifically dishonest principles and practices, but the worst part goes as follows. By definition, no apparent, perceived, or claimed evidence in any field, including history and chronology, can be valid if it contradicts the scriptural record. Of primary importance is the fact that evidence is always subject to interpretation by fallible people who do not possess all information. So right there, they openly admit that no evidence of any kind can be accepted if it doesn't align with their literal interpretation of the scriptures. That is not how science operates. In fact, in order for something to be considered scientific, it must be feasibly possible for it to be proven wrong. It's called falsifiability, and it's a necessary property of any scientific hypothesis. Some of you may have heard this example already, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit from its original format. Imagine that you and I are both scientists, and I tell you that there is a dragon in my garage. A real, fire-breathing dragon. You might ask me how I know it's a dragon, or you might ask me what it looks like, but you will almost certainly ask to bring a team of researchers to go see it, and maybe run a few tests. When we get to my garage and there's no dragon, you might have to fight back a laugh, or you might be concerned for my sanity if I start blaming everybody else's observational skills as the reason that no one can see, touch, taste, or smell the dragon or its fire, even though I claim that it's right in front of you blowing large fireballs. Something like this example has been used as an argument against the existence of God, but that is not my point here. I'm only referring to claims made of a scientific nature. If nothing could ever prove your claims or beliefs to be false, then science is not the basis of your claims or beliefs. If no evidence can ever be accepted by answers in Genesis that contradicts their beliefs, then they are not doing science. Perhaps there really is a dragon in my garage, but I absolutely cannot claim that that's a scientific truth if the scientific evidence does not support my claim. I can continue to believe that there's a dragon in my garage if I want to, but I cannot say that it is a scientific fact because there are no scientific facts that support it. Perhaps the biblical creation story is true, and perhaps the story of Noah's Ark is true, and there really was a global flood. But all of the scientific evidence contradicts that. And that's not to say that you can't still believe those things if you want to, but then you have to understand that you can no longer use science in your argument, 
because science disagrees with you. And you're never going to be able to convince the people who do respect and trust the process of science that your story is true. Evolution, the Big Bang, and the age of the Earth and the universe. These are the biggest and most common scientific facts that religious people will often reject. And the most common reasons that they give for rejecting them are that scientists don't or can't really know that they're true, that some other scientists just disagree with it, or they'll even admit outright that they just refuse to accept it because it conflicts with their religious beliefs, as Answers in Genesis does. Of course, none of these objections are even remotely scientific, but rather a denial, a rejection of science itself. Scientists can and do know these things to be true. Remember, it is the very definition of science that it is a systematically organized body of knowledge. So the science of evolutionary biology is based on the knowledge of evolution. And so on, for all of the sciences that the religious reject. Just because you don't understand it, doesn't mean that the scientists don't. The fact that some scientists disagree is irrelevant. In fact, the number of scientists that disagree is also irrelevant. What matters is whether or not they have sufficient evidence to support their objection. Despite what many people are led to believe, if those other scientists had enough evidence to support their claims, the scientific community would be all over it. Nobel Prizes are awarded to scientists that can change the face of science by proving that previously held ideas are actually wrong. They don't get shunned or ridiculed, they become legends. However, those that claim that the current science is wrong but don't have sufficient evidence to back their claim do get shunned and ridiculed because they're not doing good science. In summary, I do not believe that science has or ever could conclusively prove that God does not exist. But if you use science to support your belief in God, then you must use all of it. You can't just leave out the parts that contradict what you already believe. You either hold your beliefs because of science or with no regards to it at all. You cannot just cherry pick it for your pleasure. If you believe that the first law of thermodynamics proves that God must have supplied the first source of energy that started the universe, then you must also believe that he did so over 13 billion years ago, that the earth formed about four and a half billion years ago, and ever since shortly after that point, about 3.8 billion years ago, life has been slowly evolving on this planet, producing the diversity of life that we see today and bringing us to this point in history. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section whether or not you agree with me. And feel free to leave suggestions if you have any ideas for future topics that you'd like me to discuss. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. And make sure to subscribe to my channel. This has been another Call to Reason. Don't be afraid to think.